Fellow Nigerian, in search of excellence for Africa, my mission remains to create awareness, advance practical solutions, and transform mindsets via case studies. Together, let's meet wife deliverance for our race, country, and continent. Please share this video. I am Dr. Israel Noyerem Davidson. Thank you. In 2001, U.S.-led forces overthrew a Taliban-led Afghan government following the 9-11 attacks led by the Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. For the next 20 years, the U.S. and allies enforced democratic ideals, built up Afghan security forces, and provided operational air cover. The Taliban continued to attack. Now, eventually, under President Trump, the U.S. promised to pull out if Taliban agreed to stop attacks and hosting terrorist groups. Today, the Taliban militants have declared Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan and overrun most of the country at lightning speed with little or no resistance from the 300,000 U.S. trained and heavily equipped Afghan forces. U.S. general could not believe an army could crumble at that rate. I did not, nor did anyone else, see a collapse of an army that size in 11 days. There'll be many postmortems on this topic, but right now is not that time. It is believed the Afghan soldiers, though diehards, had unquenchable allegiance to jihadist ideologies practiced by Taliban. There were Afghan soldiers by day, Taliban at heart, and Taliban at night. A situation some suggest currently exists in Nigeria too. So Afghanistan was simply handed over to the mullahs to govern, based on their shared jihadist ideological leaning. The south and middle belt of Nigeria should wake up with urgency. The Afghan situation is cooking fast in Nigeria today. Afghanistan is number one on global terrorist list. Nigeria is number three, second to Iran, with Boko Haram, Iswap, and Fulani Hesme militia currently operating unhindered in the territory. You cannot fight religious ideology with guns or democratic ideals, particularly when the people themselves are not wired to accommodate change. See the cost of 20 years of U.S. efforts at enforcing peace, progress, and civilization in Afghanistan, and still they failed. 72 journalists and over 400 aid workers were killed. Between 66 to 69,000 Afghan troops killed. 2.7 million Afghans flee abroad and 4 million displaced citizens. 3,000 U.S. troops killed. 21,000 wounded and over 3,000 U.S. private security contractors also killed. Over 1,000 NATO coalition personnel killed. $2.3 trillion spent prosecuting Afghan war. As with Afghanistan, the Nigerian armed forces cannot contain the spread of Boko Haram, Iswap, and Fulani bandits. They have sympathizers within and highly influential individuals in the corridors of power who share jihadist ideologies. There are reports of emerging new and more deadly armed group in Zamfara state today. As in Afghanistan, should the ethnic nationalities in the South and Middle Belt break away today in less than 16 weeks, Iswap and Fulani bandits may likely take over the whole of the Northeast and West and declare a caliphate or Islamic Republic with little or no resistance. Afghanistan today is a big lesson and an urgent call on southern and middle belt political leaders to force a total restructure of Nigeria now or break it. Please set aside greed, selfishness and worthless 2023 political ambitions and unite for the sake of your citizens. Despite unfolding calamities across Nigeria, Southern and Middle Belt Christians continue to take comfort in biblical texts alone. 
believing their lands are beyond conquer because God is alive. Of course I believe he is. However, they forget that modern day Turkey was once almost 100% Christian and hosted Apostle Paul, Apostle John, and a number of saints. Nigeria is not as holier or much loved by God than Turkey and Afghanistan. Turkey was overthrown by the jihadists while the Christians had all eyes closed. Today, Turkey is more Islamic than Saudi Arabia. Nigeria, as currently configured, is sitting on a tinderbox. We have an army and those in power gifting thousands of militants, far worse than the Taliban, with amnesty, reintegration into society, logistics, and other incentives. Southern agitators demanding an end to the killings, raping, and displacement of citizens are hunted, killed, or detained without trial. In 2000, President Trump forced the release of 5,000 repentant and rehabilitated Taliban from prison and reintegrated them into the Afghan society. Many returned to the battlefield, worsened the security situation in Afghanistan, and strengthened Taliban to overrun the country. Will the Nigerian rehabilitated Boko Haram terrorists be any different? I doubt it. August Punch Editorial warns, the South is being tactically denigerianized indirectly. Able citizens are being forced out in droves via mismanaged economy, insecurity, and frustration caused by mediocrity. The Nigerian system celebrates mediocrity ingrained in the Nigerian constitution as quota system and federal character. It is an agent of slavery, fraud, injustice, underdevelopment and impunity in the south and middle belt of Nigeria. Aggravated discontent and killer herdsmen and bandist activities are driving separatist agitations in the south. The Nigerian police and army respond with violence in communities. Today, it is easy for southern young men in transit or even at home to be tagged terrorists or yahoo boys and shot dead. Raising young men in the southeast has become a scary enterprise. The Punch editorial concludes. Look, for these reasons, the best option now for the south and the middle belt must be to force a restructure of Nigeria or walk away from this union before too late. You cannot force a hyena to become a vegan. That's the truth. Afghan Christians and professionals are fleeing their country in mass, fearing for their lives and professions. UK, US, and other European countries are offering help. Who would come to the rescue of Nigerians? Should the South and Middle Belt you know, fail to act decisively right now? You see, time is running out. Now, those clamoring for restructuring are not doing so out of hatred for Nigeria, but because Northern Nigeria is dragging the rest of the country back to the Stone Age and into the abyss with it. You see, now is the time to demonstrate political skills, leadership, vision, tenacity, courage, and immunity against Takir. To save Nigeria and generations to come, let's initiate a genuine dialogue now. Restructure or break up. Look, perhaps, as Bishop Kuka cried out loudly recently, it's time to end Nigeria so that people who want development can go ahead. God bless our homelands. Thank you.